Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're out of the range with a couple of old import model handguns that were manufactured specifically for the commercial market, but they're based on military service handguns. The two guns I have out here that I want to show you are based on the other guns that we're going to start off the video with. One of those guns, this is an actual military service handgun. It's an East German Makarov, a 9x18, and it was manufactured in 1961. This one has a eight round single stack magazine that chambers that 9x18 Makarov cartridge. We're going to show you a handgun based on this that was, again, intended for export and import into the United States. The other handgun that we're going to show you this afternoon is based on this. This is a commercial handgun that was manufactured by Norinco. It chambers nine millimeter, just standard nine millimeter NATO, but it uses pretty much all the same components as the 762 Torkarev. And we'll get more into that here in a few minutes. So we're gonna show you versions of those that are really unique in one aspect, and that's in magazine capacity. Let's get started. This is my East German Mac. Again, it uses nine by 18 and a standard eight round single stack magazine. These guns are really, really cool. Probably one of the best military service pistols in history. One of my favorites. Go ahead and chamber that first round of PMC. And the Mac has a decocker lever. So it's kind of reverse of what we're used to, especially if you use the M9 in the service. Right now it's on fire. You put it up for safe and it drops the hammer to double action. And that will keep the hammer from coming back so even in double action mode, it's a safety. You, to fire it, you have to flip it down to fire. And that first shot will be double action, then all subsequent shots will be single action. All right, let's do a little bit of shooting with this old war horse. Just incredibly good shooting guns. I mean, mild recoil, it's an effective caliber. If you wanna carry one of these, Hornady and other companies make really good carry ammunition in nine by 18. This handgun is the export model. This one was made in Russia and it has target sights on it, unlike the East German Mac, which has fixed military sights. And on the left-hand side of the handgun, you'll see the model number. It's IJ70, which is a model number for handguns manufactured by, I'm just gonna call it IMEZ in Russia. And then the latter half is 17AH, which means that it's chambering in three, it's chambered in 380 and it's a standard high capacity. And they call it high capacity because it increases the capacity from the original eight rounds to 10 rounds. And it uses a semi double stack magazine. And because of that, you'll notice that the grip, let's go ahead and put this one on safe here really quick. You'll notice that the grip is thicker with the double stack. All right, so let's do a little bit of shooting with this. I'm gonna show you an interesting quirk with this handgun as well. It has target grips on it, has more of a pronounced hump on the back and actually feels really good in my hands. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on fire and lock that slide to the rear. Grab one of the 10 round 380 magazines, insert it into the grip, let the slide go home All right, the max or heel release. So you just push this little lever down with your thumb and pull and you can extract the magazine. Another 10 rounds. All right, so pretty interesting. And again, intended purely for export. Now there's an interesting quirk with this 380 uh, Makarov. And I'm gonna show you that right now. I'm gonna take, oh, there it is, it's uh, in the gun. Okay, I'm gonna take this single stack eight round nine by 18 magazine out of my East German Makarov and I'm gonna load it with 380 ammunition. It'll hold the same number of rounds the 380 is just one millimeter shorter in overall length than the 
Makarov cartridge, so that's why it fits comfortably into the magazine. All right, this is, this is kind of cool. Interesting little fact that some of you may not have known about. So you can see that obviously that's a really thick magazine well. I get my index finger all the way into the mag well. I can insert the standard single stack eight round magazine. It'll wobble in there. But what's interesting are the 10 round magazines taper down to a standard width, which would be the same width as the single stack magazines. So at the top of the magazine, it's being held in the proper alignment. And I can go ahead and drop the slide. Keep in mind, I have that eight round magazine in here and the gun still works just fine. That's pretty cool. Now, I think somebody out there made some base plates for standard eight round magazines that would stop it from wobbling. So when you put, put the magazine in there, it would center the magazine in the grip and make the gun work even better, presumably. I've never had a problem with the eight rounders working in it. So that to me is one of the coolest guns I have in my collection. I don't know how many of these that are out there. Jason and I were traveling around one time. We saw one sitting in like an old pawn shop that was in pretty rough shape. I have one that's new in the box and this is my shooter that I found and I picked them up dirt cheap years ago. So you may wanna, if you wanna pick one up, get on Gun Broker, places like that and look for the IJ70-17AH. That's the model number and you'll be able to find the handgun. Now let's take a look at the 213 handgun manufactured by Norinco. This handgun, by its designation, 213 makes it a nine millimeter. It's a single stack eight round magazine and everything on this handgun uh, is pretty much standard 762 Tuckerev fair. It's gonna have uh, the exact same slide and receiver. They've changed it by putting a nine millimeter barrel in it. Then on the bottom side, if you look in the magazine well, because the 762 Tuckerev is a longer cartridge than nine millimeter. They've put a little spacer back here so that they didn't have to machine a new lower. So the nine millimeter version uses the exact same grip frame with the exception they put that little spacer in there so it'll work with nine millimeter. To load the handgun up, put the magazine in and you would charge it. And I will tell you right now, the magazine spring in this thing is, is really weak and the gun's prone to malfunction. It's just one of those things, man, when you're dealing with collectibles, but that spring tension is really, really low on this magazine. So I've chambered around, the hammer is back. It's a single action hammer or fire, fire control unit. And if I push that safety forward, this is made for a US import. But if you push that forward, that puts it in safe, pulling it back, puts it in fire, which is counterintuitive to me. Typically I'd push forward for fire, but fire is back. Now, what you can do is just like with the standard military tucker of, you can very carefully point the handgun in a safe direction, pull the trigger and ease that hammer down, then pull it back to half cock and carry the gun in that mode. I have a live round chambered and the gun's on half cock to ready it for action. You would pull it out, make sure it's on fire in this case, cock the hand, hammer back and start shooting the gun. And just as I tell you guys, this little guy is typically unreliable. It fires eight rounds, no problem. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put this slide home here really quick. So now we have the 213 Alpha on the bottom. It looks identical to the standard 213 nine millimeter, but if you take a look at the grip frame, the 213A is on my right Obviously, it's quite a bit thicker. If you take a look at the relief cuts for the safety, they've even changed the slide stop to accommodate the wider grip frame. Some differences in the gun. Now, this is something I found interesting in the 213A. The gun uses a 14 round magazine. So uh, the other one uses eight. We now have 14 rounds because we have this double stack. It looks like a little Browning high power magazine that's a little bit truncated because the grip on the Tuckerev is shorter than uh, something like the Browning high power, but we still get 14 rounds in the magazine. What's interesting to note though, is unlike the other 213, the A, you can see it's in fire, red's exposed, back is fire. It has a magazine safety. I'm not gonna chamber around. I'm just gonna put a full magazine into it and point it down range and pull the trigger the magazine safety is disengaged by the presence of the magazine in the grip frame. So let's go ahead and do a little shooting with this guy. 
Now it feels really good. This feels better to me than the standard talk rev because the talk rev is um, narrow and has a kind of a short stumpy grip frame. It, it fits awkwardly in my hand. It's difficult for me to shoot very accurately. This handgun, both Jason and I agree, feels much better in the hand. Now this little gun works better. The magazine springs are, or spring is a little bit more stiff, so I don't have as many problems with this gun as I do my other 213. You have to admit, that's really interesting. Can't put the hammer down because it has that magazine safety. It's a beautiful gun though. So we had some pretty epic failures with both of the Norinco 213s this afternoon. It was pretty funny. Even the double stack guns started choking and it just having all sorts of problems. But the two handguns that didn't have any issues were the Makarovs. This East German Makarov is a lot like my Bulgarians and my Russians. It's a, a very well-made handgun and it has a very solid feel to it. The one thing I did notice about the double stack gun is that the lower is some sort of an alloy, triggers kind of toyish and sounds toyish, but the gun shoots great and works really, really well. So if you guys are going to pick up guns like this, these old collectibles, don't expect them to run flawlessly or expect to be looking for parts to get them back up and running if you shoot them. That's the downside to shooting these old collectibles. You never know when a part's going to break, when a spring's going to go bad, and you may not be able to find parts to get it back up and running again. So that's the reason a lot of people don't shoot them. And I know I've broken my fair share of my collectibles in the past, and it's kind of disheartening, especially when you can't get the spare parts. Guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, a great way to do that is to become a Patreon supporter. There is a link down below. Consider clicking that link and joining our Patreon family. You can also support us right here on YouTube. In the video browser you're watching right now, there's a little join button either on your mobile device or on your desktop. Give that join button a click, check out some perks, and consider becoming part of our YouTube family. And last but not least, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Guys, thanks for 12 years of support, and we'll talk to you all soon.